Whole brain radiation is, as it sounds, we're treating the entire brain with radiation. Conventional radiation, the way it's been given for a long time, is that a little bit of radiation is given every day, and that's repeated five days a week, up to seven or eight weeks. In that process, there's a lot of healthy cells that receive the same amount of radiation as the cancer cells, but the healthy cells are, are better at repairing between the different radiation treatments. So if you give a treatment today and you give another one 24 hours later, between those two treatments, the healthy cells are repairing at a, a faster rate than the cancer cells. Unfortunately, when a patient is diagnosed with brain metastases, there are many more lesions that are not detectable on an MRI or any imaging modality that we have today. We have the potential to grow, and some have referred to this as the dandelion effect. When you blow on a dandelion, all these seeds shower an area. It's not dissimilar to that phenomenon where there is a primary cancer somewhere in the body and therefore there's the possibility for cancer cells to seed and deposit multiple areas of the brain. So whole brain radiation therapy is used to try to sterilize not just the visible brain metastases but also the microscopic brain metastases that we just can't see yet. Radiation's been around for about 100 years and it's been a really important part of treating cancer. For some people, that's an appropriate uh, treatment, but it comes with a lot of side effects. Almost everybody's tired, sometimes really severely tired. You lose your hair. You can get inflammation in your ear. Sometimes it leads to uh, hearing loss. It makes people nauseous sometimes. And what worries patients the most and what causes us the most concern is it can have an effect on memory, concentration, and utter brain functioning. Whole brain radiotherapy has a devastating impact on cognition. We're targeting the areas where new memories are formed, the hippocampus, as well as all of the interconnections between different parts of the brain that are critical for higher level thought and memory. You can't expose that much of the brain to toxic radiation and expect to have no consequences. So if we are going to strive for a cure, or at least long-term suppression of cancer, and keep patients alive for years and years, we really have to think about what their quality of life is going to be. And quality of life starts with what's up here.